to welcome to our platform here the 10th president of the International Chiropractors Association, dynamic speaker, Dr. Jimmy Gray. I felt like the new doctor talk. You can move that. Thank you, Dr. Williams. I thought I was at the new doctor talk there for a while at DE. Well, I'm gonna try to make you a fanatic today. I've heard some things, I've had some phone calls from a lot of you. And I heard you're not quite as inspired as you used to be. But we're gonna change that today. And for those of the ones that aren't here, I guarantee you they'll know that you were here. You know, I've been a lot of places in this country, had the opportunity to do an awful lot of things. But the most important thing that I want to share with you today is that I'm a pure product of the individual that you just heard talk. I want you to understand that. I've never been to another seminar. I've never been to another, any kind of chiropractic ga gathering other than DE meetings and listening to his counsel. That's where I came from. I'm a product of him. And I know some of you, sometimes you may not agree with him. You may not even like him. But I want you to consider what the man has accomplished. I want you to consider everything that he's done. I want you to consider the direction that he's going in. And I hope and pray that you'll consider, most of all, following him, like I chose to do a long time ago. You know, I love to talk to students more than anybody. I relate very, very closely to you. I get an awful lot of letters from students. I talk to them daily on the phone. I know what's going on in their minds, and I know what's going on in your heart. I know your fears. I know the things that have got a hold of you at the present time. You wonder where we're going with national health care. Are we going to be in? Are we going to be in? Are we going to be out? Where are we going to be? What's going to happen to us? Are we going to be non-existent? Let me assure you, you will never be non-existent. I guarantee you one thing. We are on the verge of phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. Now, I'm going to come back to that in just a few moments. You've heard a lot of politics in this last week or so. In fact, probably in these last few months, ever since President Clinton took office. But I'd like to try and instill, if I could, in you the reason that you came to this school. And if your reason was different than this, I hope this will be your reason from this point forward. Because I want you to have the passion that I have for chiropractic. If you've got the passion, I guarantee you something. You're going to go out in this world and do phenomenal things. You don't realize the talent that you have right now. You don't realize it. You may think you do, but you're about to be tested. You're going to see incredible things happening. And believe me, it is a time of phenomenal opportunity. But I want to share some ideas with you, and I want you to know where I came from. I want you to understand I wasn't born into chiropractic. Nobody in my family is a chiropractor. Many times people ask me, you know, they think that I came from a strong chiropractic background and I have all this phenomenal knowledge and I've got all, been able to accomplish all these things because of this tremendous family that I must have come from. I tell you honestly, I came from exactly the same family that many of you came from. When I taught chiropractic when I was younger, chiropractors at that time were referred to by everybody as a quack. And that's all they were. When I first told my family I wanted to be a chiropractor, they wanted to take me to a therapist. <laughs> I'm sure you've had that suggestion. But I gotta tell you some things. I chose to be a chiropractor. In reality, I now believe I was chosen, just like you. I went off to Logan College. I studied very, very hard. I got tremendous grades. I won an awful lot of awards. I had the most adjustments in clinic of anybody. I was the vice president's clinician. I had all that. 
And inside of me, there was something that almost killed my career, fear. I had such a deep fear inside of myself that I almost tried, in fact, I did try to get out of this profession. And the reason I bring that up is because I see in the eyes of some of you. I see in the eyes of students everywhere I go. And it's not just students. I see it in the eyes of the field practitioner. You know, one of the things I cherish greatly is to receive letters, as I told you before, from students. I carry them with me, and I read them, just to remind me. I've got a letter sitting right here. It came from a young student, waiting for his boards to come back. Ready to go out into the field. Said that he went into chiropractic because he wanted to take care of people. He wanted to serve God by serving mankind. And he chose chiropractic as his vehicle. After being in school, all that time, the closer he got toward graduation, waiting for his board results, and he chose to go home, not as a chiropractor, he chose to go home as a firefighter. He was gonna go home because he figured by being a firefighter, at least he could still serve people. And as you read the letter and you go on and you, and, you, and you feel what he felt, he talked about the fear inside of him, the fear to adjust people. Because he didn't think the adjustment was enough. That the adjustment was nothing more than popping bones. That's all it was. And he just couldn't go out in society with just that. Because in essence, he thought it was a fraud. I've got another letter from a practitioner. Don't think that fear is just, as I said, in the eyes of students, it's in the eyes of the field. Because they were once students. Practitioner been in practice for nine years. Nine years. Never gave a chiropractic adjustment ever in nine years of practice. His mother died in his arms, never receiving a chiropractic adjustment. But thank God both of those letters go on to talk about the restored passion, the understanding that finally came when God used me to touch their heart. When I was able to give them a purpose, a reason to be, the same exact thing that that man who you just heard talk gave me 20 years ago. I came out of Logan College with such fear inside of me that I tried everything to get out of this profession. I chose to go off into rhinconology. I wanted to be a radiologist because x-rays can't ask questions. X-rays can't bark back at you. They can't complain. But lo and behold, the Spirit had a bigger purpose for me. I no sooner got involved in the program and the program folded because there was no money to support it, so I had to go home. I had to go home and face the guy that sent me to school. This was a guy who, when I left, was driving this beautiful car, wearing a white jacket, walking around in his office with his chest out, that now was wearing some wild shirt and driving a Volkswagen bus. I was embarrassed to go see him. I didn't want to go see him, but I was forced to go see him because there was nothing else I could do. Inside of me, there was something that caused me to go see him. The Spirit pushed me to see him. And I remember the day that I went to his office and I was astounded, absolutely astounded. You couldn't even get in his office. There were so many people. There were people sitting outside waiting to get in his office. They were sitting on the ground waiting to get in his office. I couldn't get hardly in the back door because of the cars and the people waiting to get in. That's the same individual that sent me to school, that went through a tremendous transformation because he also had the fear. But the fear was eradicated by the words of your president. He's the one that took me off to Atlanta, Georgia. Took me to a DE meeting. And I sat in an audience just like you're sitting here today. 2,500 chiropractors and Dr. Sid spoke. And when he spoke, he spoke only to me. 
He talked about Billy Graham. And I tell this story everywhere I go because it's exactly what happened to me and I pray to God it'll happen to you. He said he couldn't draw a crowd. Nobody would listen to his message till finally he had a discussion with one of his closest friends. And the friend said, it's very simple, Billy. There's one problem. You've never faced it. You either accept the Bible in full faith or you don't. It's that simple. You either accept it's true or it's not. It's that simple. And once you make that decision, your ministry will take on a new meaning. Well, you know history. He obviously made it. And with that, Dr. Sid turned to that audience and he said to me, he said, when you accept chiropractic in full faith, it's either right or it's wrong. Your practice and your life will take on a new meaning. And I can't tell you why, gang, but the fear inside of me started to dissipate very, very rapidly. He went on for the next three days to talk about the chiropractic principle. And then I started to realize what was wrong with me. I started to understand that here with this phenomenal education, with all this work that I had done, the reason I had the fear is because all of these facts, all of the books, every bit of knowledge I was given was never connected to the one thing I was going to be, the one thing that gave me a reason to be, the one thing that made me unique, the principle upon which this profession is founded. And once I understood that, once I started to see it, once I could feel it, I went home and became a wild man. We started the zero patients a day in June 1st, 1972. With nine months, within nine months, we were over 300 patients a day. We continued to climb and climb and climb and climb. Most people I've ever adjusted in one day is 585 people by myself. Me and 25 CAs. I tell you that for a very important reason, because a lot of you don't think it can be done anymore. I'm telling you that it can be done easier today than it was back then. And I'll tell you another thing. There wasn't any insurance. That's when insurance just was starting to come through the door. And did I run around with a loincloth on and with old shoes on? I made so damn much money I couldn't spend it. I'm telling you something. The fear started to subside in me for one reason, because I finally realized what I was supposed to be. The most detrimental thing that you can ever do to somebody is to take them through a school, give them a phenomenal education, and give them no purpose. Let them go out in the field with a DC degree and have no idea how to use it. But I'll tell you why it's happening. I'll tell you exactly why it's happening, and I'll tell you what's happening as far as the fear that's inside of some of you and in the field practitioner. Because I have the opportunity to go everywhere in this country, and I talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. I deal with groups, not only student groups, but field practitioner groups. The reason the fear is there is because our own people are perpetuating the fear. Something happened, and I watched this thing for 20 years. Something happened in this profession. For a long time, it was easy because we knew where the enemy stood. The enemy was out there. The enemy was the AMA, not the individual practitioner who was trying to do the best job they could do with the knowledge they had, but the political arm of that practitioner called the AMA. We knew where they stood. It was easy to combat that. It made us stronger. It finally came to a head in an antitrust suit, didn't it? And we beat him in court after 11 years. And then it went to appeal and we beat him there. And we won the appeal, but they got smart. They got real smart. One of the most brilliant strategies that I've ever seen put in place. And it's been proven to me over and over and over again that the strategy was correct. They couldn't come out front and badmouth the chiropractor anymore because every time they did, the chiropractor's practice got bigger. The chiropractor got stronger, and the people got more angry. So what did they choose to do? The smartest move that was ever put upon this profession. They chose to turn the chiropractor against the chiropractor. Instead of us bad-mouthing them, why don't we let them bad-mouth their own? They'll erode their confidence. 
And if you can erode their confidence and affect their students, you'll change the direction. And if you'll change the direction of that profession and more align them, if you will, with our thinking, then guess what they'll become? They'll become us. There will be no alternative. There'll be no need for alternative because they'll be doing exactly the same thing that we're doing. You don't think that's true. You may think that that's ridiculous. Well, I'm gonna share some things with you today. You know, the one thing that has bothered me most is to watch this fear being perpetuated, especially in your minds. Because there's gonna come a day, and that day isn't far off, when the 11th ICA president is gonna be from Life Chiropractic College. Now, I want you to remember that. I want you to listen to statements of people that are in authority roles in our profession. You read these articles, you don't have the experience, but the articles itself affect you and they affect you adversely. Though few chiropractors take literally the D.D. Palmer's statement that subluxation was the cause of disease, the idea that the vertebral subluxation complex is an etiological agent in the disease process lives on as a dominant factor in the chiropractic education. That concept, however, has no valid foundation in science. If believed and practiced per se, it represents a health fraud at best and a health hazard at worst. That's a DC saying that. That's a DC in an authority role saying that. You see, they're using exactly the same arguments that the AMA used against us, but it's our own people that is using it. No scientific validity. Let's attack their principles. Let's attack their position. Listen to this one. What is the purpose of the chiropractic adjustment? If we accept the philosophical approach of the narrow-minded chiropractor of today, the only purpose of the adjustment is to correct a subluxation of the spine. Chiropractors follow those, or chiropractors who follow those, preach this concept and believe through the adjustment, the spiritual energy, which they call innate intelligence, can once again flow from brain cell to tissue cell. This is clearly a religious concept but not a scientific one. It appears to them to be much easier to simply say chiropractors find the correct subluxation, an entity, now catch this, this is a subtle thing, an entity that is assumed by them to be abnormal, but which other members of the healthcare system cannot recognize or understand. Isn't that, that's a, a phenomenal, enlightening statement, isn't it? What about the vertebral subluxation? Is it an actual displacement? Can it be put back in place with an adjustment? Nothing that we know of anatomy, physiology, orthopedics, radiology, neurology will support that concept. You know what? I'm gonna give you some facts and figures here in a minute. But these are our people. These are our people. You see, they took our people and turned them against us. But you gotta understand something. These are not our people. These are people that, as far as I'm concerned, were hand-chosen. Hand-chosen. You see, they approached us with a three-prong attack. Let's atta attack them scientifically, but let's let them say it, not us. Let's take some of their people and support them. Let's endorse them. Let's embrace them, and let's put them in positions. Independent medical examiners. Let's put them in those positions. Let's put them in, in consultant positions for insurance companies so that now we'll attack them also on the financial arm. And better yet, let's subtly try to introduce as best we can the final blow. Let's see if we can get the chiropractors to really push forth, erode their confidence to the point that they'll have to turn to us and when they do, we will open our arms and hand them something called pharmaceuticals. Let's put pharmaceuticals in chiropractic. Now we have a manipulating physician who gives drugs. Well, you know something? There's a problem with that. From our perspective, the world doesn't need another osteopath, do they? We've already got them. Even though you can barely find one that knows how to manipulate or even spell it, the bottom line is, they will cling to that and hold on to that difference because there is a political reason for it. 
which I'll talk about in just a moment. But you see, when they launched this attack, what happened to us? What happened to many of the field practitioners? What happened to many of the students? They started to buy it. And that's what I see. That's the reason for your fear. You forgot why you came. You forgot who you are. And you're starting to buy everything that is put forth. There's no scientific validity to the subluxation. There's no basis for our approach to healthcare. Here's one of the consultants. In practice, the emphasis on identification of subluxation, subluxated vertebra. Chiropractors find subluxations that at, at best, the best, best of the, the medical profession cannot find. In this case, it's seeing what you want to see. Now this, the title of this article, by the way, and this was in, by the way, not only chiropractic journals, but this was also in the AMA journal. Title of the article, take it from a DC. A lot of chiropractic is a sham. You think they aren't in position? I hope the next time you read some of these things, not only...